Hi, this is James Gorman Toro here with the final book in the late Summer Star series. I'm so glad to be done with this trilogy. Now that um, I'm finished both the Cyberpunk trilogy and the Summer Slar series, I can now just move on to uh, other books and just read those for a bit before I start our series again. I already got uh, two series planned out for next year, so um, when I decide it is time to start a series, I will post one trailer and just do one series at a time and not two again, as it was a bit... Um, it's just a lot of work just trying to, to do two series at once, and it, it, it um, was... Um, it was just very difficult to have two series going at the same time. But anyway, the book I will be talking about today, <clears throat> Dirty White Boys by Stephen Hunter. This was first published in October of 1994 by um, Random House Publisher. This edition here is from, this is from Island Books. Um, it's sort of uh, published by... Uh, Island Books, and, and this one's um, this one's from December 1995. I first discovered this book through the Facebook group Men's Adventure Book, telling me this had some really intense, um, like shootouts and uh, really shocking and graphic scenes. So, and I read Stephen Hunter's Point of Impact, which became the um, the 2007 uh, action movie uh, Shooter of Mark Wahlberg, which was really good, and I enjoyed that one. This is actually a reread for me. This is the second time I re I read this book, and first time I read it, it was okay. Like I thought, it's good, but it could have been a little better. But then after my second reread of the book, I really didn't like it that much as I did the first time. I just I just didn't like it. But uh, it had some good moments. But I'll explain it later on my review why I didn't enjoy this book and why I feel it could be so much better. All right, then on to the review. Oh, and spoiler alert, as I will be giving away crucial details within the story. Plot. The McAllister State Penitentiary, or the MAC in Oklahoma, which the most dangerous criminals in America are kept. Lamar Pyle is one of the worst and most feared men in the prison. A tall, heavily built man with the words fuck you tattooed on his knuckles and has the biggest cock out of everyone else in the MAC. Also in the prison is his cousin o Odolin, a hulking giant that follows any or orders given by Lamar. While he's dumb and doesn't speak well, however, what he lacks in, Odin is a very strong and powerful man, able to break a man's neck like a twig. And Richard, a talented artist who murdered his mother in a fit of rage. Unlike the other two men, Richard is weak and defenseless against the other prisoners who would like to rape him for fun. To protect himself from the other criminals, Richard gains Lamar's trust by drawing him a muscular lion with a beautiful large-breasted woman posing next to it and a castle in the background. Impressed by the drawing, Lamar and Owen keep the other prisoners away from Richard as long as he draws whatever Lamar wants him to. Lamar is in the middle of having a shower in the guards' quarters after earning it by paying four cartons of cigarettes to Harry Flunt, allowing him to bribe the guards. However, Lamar's shower is interrupted by Junior Jefferson, a well-liked yet feared black prisoner who is a rapist and child molester. He attempts to rape Lamar, but fights back. Lamar beats Junior to a bloody pulp, bites off a chunk of his nose, then shoves a soap bar down his throat to shut him up. When Lamar orders Junior to get up to beat him up some more, he realizes Junior is dead. Knowing full well that the black inmates will order a hit on him, Lamar must escape before lockdown. He gets Richard to go find his cousin Owen, while Richard retrieves his makeshift skank. Once Richard brings back Owen, Lamar takes all three of them to Harry, the caretaker that works in the prison. Lamar has Harry able to get the three men to the medical center in the prison by fooling the guards that Lamar has information he's willing to trade with, with them. Owen pries open a window by breaking a chair as Lamar helps Harry tie himself up to fool the guards he was forced to help him. After gagging himself, Lamar ties up his arms and slits Harry's throat with the skank. They jump out the window, landing on top of the van. They take the driver, Willard, hostage as Lamar has Odolin break Willard's fingers till he tells him where his company keeps their trucks along with a War II vet that owns guns. After getting the information he wants, Lamar has Odolin strangle Willer to death. Meanwhile, a 48-year-old highway patrol trooper, Russell Bud Putai, is called in the middle of the night by his boss, Captain Tim James. He tells Bud that three inmates from the MAC have escaped and is ordered to pick up rookie trooper Ted Pepper and regroup with the other troopers to find the three escaped convicts. Leaving his wife, two sons, Bud puts on his uniform, gears up, then goes to get Ted. Unknown to his partner or his wife, Jen, Bud is secretly having an affair with Ted's wife, Holly, as they've been going to a hotel for sex since neither of them isn't getting much sex from each other's partner. 
After getting Ted fully armed with a Mossberg shotgun and an AR-15 assault rifle, Bud drives off to the maintenance shop in Chickawa. Once there, they meet several officers along with Lieutenant C.D. Henderson. He gets a briefing about the three dangerous criminals and how they would be handling this situation. After ditching the van taking the first set of wheels, they drive down a long, empty road till they find the Stepford's farm. Lambert has Richard go knock on the front door. When an old woman answers, Lambert strikes out of the shadows while Odoin breaks through the back and knocks out knocks the old man out of his chair. The other couple is Bill and Mary. Odoin smashes open a gun case in the living room since Richard was unable to open it. Both Lambert and Odoin arm themselves with shotguns. Bill refuses to tell them where he keeps his pistols. Odoin breaks his arm as his wife gives in and tells Richard they're downstairs in a safe. Taking all the firearms and ammo they'll need, Lambert forces Mary to cook breakfast for them while Bill is tied up. Bud and Ted are finishing their coffee break, about to return back to the patrol as the search for the three missing convicts hasn't gone well. Bud calls his wife Jen to chat with her before getting back on his shift. Jen tells him that a friend of hers swears she saw him at a hotel. Bud lies he wasn't there and her friend must have mistaken him for someone else. Again, states it wasn't him, then calls Holly and tells her he wants to play it safe for a while before he's ready to pay her for another visit. Just as the two men are about to leave, a waitress tells Bud that Bill always shows up for his coffee every morning and not once as he missed it. Bud passes it off as Bill is busy with something, but the waitress insists that Bill would never miss his coffee. He's even driven through nasty winter weather to get his favorite hot drink. And she has tried calling his house four times and hasn't gotten an answer. Bud agrees to drive by to see if anything is wrong. When they get there, Richard alerts Lamar of a squad car pulling up into the driveway. Both Lamar and Owen ambush them as Ted is shot by shotgun blast, then t Bud is hit multiple times. Taking away their guns as Bud curses at Lamar, Owen destroys their radio so they can't call for help and steals Ted Mossberg's shotgun and his AR-15. Richard brings the elderly couple into the G-Wagoneer. Lamar then executes Ted with his .45 pistol, but it's empty when he goes to kill Bud. He takes Owen's shotgun and shoots him. Bud awakens in the hospital as he survived his near-death experience. Bud learns the reason why the shotgun blast didn't kill him. Bill kept his buckshot under the work, his workbench as both Lamar and Owen missed it and took his birdshot, which is less lethal against humans. While he is while he is awarded for his bravery along with his deceased partner Ted, however, Bud blames himself for the death of Ted as he easily led him into a trap and failed to save his partner's life. Bud attends Ted's funeral, then rests at home to fully recover from his injuries. His boss, Tim, offers Bud a new position to train gun officers or work in the army, keeping him out of his cruiser. Unsure what to do, Bud pays Bill Stafford a visit after Lamar spared them when Richard failed to kill them while trying to toughen him up. During the visit, Bill tells Bud a bunch of line drawings he found and asks Bud if he would like to look at them. Meanwhile, Richard tells Lamar a place they can lay low from the law. After Richard was sentenced to prison when he murdered his mother, Ruth Tall fell in love with him after she saw news footage of him. Ruth wrote letters stating she, would, she wanted to see him when he was released from prison. She allows all three men into her house as long as they work around her barn. However, Richard isn't interested in Ruth, but Lamar takes a real liking to her and, and has sex. As they are laying low, Lamar is already planning a series of robberies so they can make money. Bud visits the McAllister State Penitentiary to search through the belongings of all three criminals to see if they can find any leads since none of them have been spotted. Bud doesn't find anything on Lamar or Odoin, but when he goes through Richard's belongings, he happens to find a penthouse magazine and notices the, that the image of the model posing has been traced. Bud wonders if this has something to do with the line pictures he got from Bill. Lamar robs a Denny's restaurant in Wichita Falls he scouted out earlier. He, Orland, and Ruth enter the building wearing raincoats and ski masks. Lamar kills a cop coming up the men's room. A off-duty cop tries to shoot Lamar, but Richard, who sat inside to let the crew know if the coast was clear, he causes her to miss as Ruth puts her down with a shotgun. Lamar forces the unmanager train to open the safe, then kills him. When police show up, Olin blasts away with the AR-15, forcing the wound officers to take cover. Lamar tells his crew to flee with the money while he holds them off, allowing them to escape. Lamar shoots his way out, killing two more cops, stealing their weapons, and takes their squad car, making a fast getaway. Bud hears about the breaking news of the robbery in the Wichita Falls and drives over to see the cr crime scene. It's a mess, with six dead and others wounded. While searching around the restaurant, he finds a doodle of a line on the table where Richard was sitting. 
He takes it if these lines have something to do with Lamar. Both Texas and Oklahoma police fail in their search of the criminals. This causes pe people along with other criminals supporting Lamar as a folk hero. This pisses Bud off. Lamar reveals to Richard why he's been making him draw the lines. He wants to get a tattoo of Richard's creation on his chest after Richard finally pu pulled off his greatest line drawing ever. However, Lamar only wants the best to work on him, so they go to Lawton looking for a high-skilled tattoo artist to pull off Richard's creation. The game visits Tattoo as Richard explains to the owner, Ruff, what Lamar wants. Ruff states she can pull it off, but it will take a full week, which Lamar can't wait that long. So Ruff tells Richard about a highly skilled Japanese tattoo artist, Jimmy Kun, who studied under Huoro, a master tattoo artist from Tokyo. They drive all the way to his shop after talking with Jimmy. He agrees to give Lamar the tattoo he wants for a lot of money. It will take some moon to complete Richard's creation onto Lamar's chest. While Jimmy is working on Lamar's tattoo, Bud unexpectedly shows up and engages in, into a violent shootout. Olin is badly wounded in the shoe, and when Lamar emerges, drawing out his two forty-five pistols, but is shot in the left hand, losing two, two fingers. Unable to see, both men exchange gunfire at each other, causing massive damage to the tattoo shop. Bud escapes to the base of one of his pistols, click empty, while Lamar takes Olin into Ruth's car and dies. Outraged not only from having his tattoo incomplete, but losing the only family member he cared cared about. Richard draws Lamar a picture of Olin as an angel and Bud as a faceless devil. This helps him regain focus and squares revenge on Bud, Putai, hatching a plan to draw the highway trooper into a trap. While Bud is torn between his wife Jen and continuing his affair with Holly, when Lamar has his trap set up, he calls Bud as the two men will face off in a final showdown. When you begin to read this novel, the author lets know how serious it is on page one, telling you how nasty, smart, and dangerous Lamar Pyle is. Heavily detailed scenery of Oklahoma and Texas while adding short yet intense moments of action. From the opening prison shower fight to the bloody Denny's shootout having the edge of my seat. Lamar Paul is one of the most badass characters I've ever read in a novel as I never read a novel where he names his fists when he uses them. However, I felt Dirty White Boys could have been a lot better as it feels like a tame thriller. There are characters within this novel I dislike. Bud Butai is the character I hated the most. He's a lying, cheating, ugly, boring, and unlikable person who spends most of his time having sex with his partner's younger wife because he isn't getting much from his old lover. And the blind luck Bud has is unbelievable, surviving near-death experience to finding Lamar out of the blue. Unlike, unlike the well-crafted and layered character of Lamar, Bud Putai is the kind of person I can't stand, wishing he would have died off early in the novel, and I don't like his name either. Other characters I dislike were the sex-crazed Holly, only she cares about getting it on with Bud as he's the only person she's attached to this entire story. Even during the final showdown, all she wants is one man in her life not caring for hers. Lieutenant C.D. Henderson is the alcoholic loudmouth who claims to know everything and is always proven wrong multiple times while trying to catch Lamar in his game. Reading one scene how he caught this one killer, then going on and on how he's going to catch Lamar was annoying to read through. And lastly, the Stepford couple, spending every minute trying to chew off your ear what they did and how long they knew each other, wishing they were dead too. While this novel opens up to a strong start, however, by the third and final act is when it falls apart. In the search for Lamar, Bud visits an art gallery talking with the owner about lions. The owner believes with all the drawings Bud has found that Lamar wants to display his creation that he has had Richard working on him, believing it's a tattoo. However, Lamar does <clears throat> however, Lamar does his research on finding the most skilled tattoo artist to pull off Richard's creation. Bud doesn't. He only, he's only taking advice from an art gallery owner. For all Bud knows, Lamar might want Richard's creation remain to a fine painting. And when visiting an Indian cop asking for a local tattoo shops, he gives him the address of Johnny K, where, where Lamar happens to be. When Bud finds the place, none of the lights are on, no open sign flashing from the window or vehicles parked in front of it. Yet, for whatever reason, Bud just lets himself in as he should have gone in. And during the shootout in Johnny's tattoo shop, Bud wounds Olin, but because he can't see in the dark, he keeps on shooting the defenseless Olin as not once does Lamar's cousin even score a shot on him. Bud pumped 36 rounds senselessly into Olin, using all three of his guns at once, acting unprofessionally. And the ending was so cliché, it took all the fun out of the novel and made it feel more like your typical crime thriller. If Stephen Hunter killed off Bud Putai and focused the story more on Lamar and his gain, along with any more action, then Dirty White Boys would have been a lot better. I always find it annoying when, when the more interesting characters are always killed off, leaving you with the flat, plain, basic characters. 
I strongly felt Lambert should have been the main character in the story, not that goddamn Bud Butai. I also felt Richard could have been turned into a meaner character with build-up frustration that has been building up inside of him just waiting to be released to release it. Overall, I don't recommend Dirty White Boys as it's a very disappointing fur that could have been so much more. While it has its moments, but it feels very tamed in places along with unwanted filler. I'm sure you can find better not alls out there than this one. That is it for the review. I hope you all enjoyed it. As for Dirty White Boys, I did not like it reading the second time. It just felt it could have been so much better. It feels tamed like in places, and I felt it just... If Lamar was the main character and just had a lot more action just focused on Lamar in the game, would have been much better. But I'm still going to hang on to the novel, um, despite the fact when I read something I don't enjoy, I usually just get rid of it. However, despite the despite some of the things I don't like with Dirty White Boys, it still has its moments, and it has a really badass a badass character like Lamar, which I haven't really read anywhere else in, in other books. There have been a few characters that have come close to the, like the badass level of Lamar, but... I'm just going to hang on to it and just keep the parrot back. I'm not going to bother getting like any other editions of it. <clears throat> all right. That's it for the video today. I hope you all enjoyed it. And as I said, I will begin reading George Orwell's 1984 to start to start off some science fiction books I got planned out. And then after I'm done that, I will read Frank Herbert's Dune and then his sequel, Dune Messiah. And then I will read um, the horror books, uh, Billy Little's University, and then Sean Hudson's Chainsaw Terror, one of his rare obscure horror novels he wrote in the early 80s and i already got my next action thriller novel picked out crackdown so i'm just gonna be reading away this uh, month and just reading some books um horror and science fiction for a while before i start off my next series uh, next year if you like this video please like oh <clears throat> almost forgot <laughs> And other books I've read by Stephen Hunter are Point of Impact, which I said is um, a really good book and was made to a good film. I'll definitely be reading that. And I got the sequel of um, Point of, um, of Bob Week Swagger, um, Blacklight. And I also got a solo book by Stephen Hunter, uh, another one I'll have to check out as... As I do like the guy's writing, I just wish, you know, sometimes... I uh, just wish in the Endure White Boys you put a little more action to it. Um, just want to make it better, but anyway... If you like this video, please like it, share it, and don't forget to subscribe to Octora Library and the YouTube channel at the same name, a place you can post your review of fiction. Until then, I'll catch you later. Plot. The Alistair State Penitentiary, or the MAC, in Oklahoma, which the most dangerous criminals in America are kept. Lamar Pyle is one of the worst and most feared men in the prison. A tall, heavily built man with the words fuck you tattooed on his knuckles and has the biggest cock out of everyone else in the MAC. Also in the prison is his cousin Odlin, a hulking giant that follows any orders given to by Lamar. While he's dumb and doesn't speak well, however, what he lacks in Odlin is a very strong and powerful man, able to break a man's neck like a twig. And Richard, a talented artist who murdered his mother in a fit of rage. Unlike the other two, the other two men, Richard is weak and defenseless against the other prisoners and would, and would like... Uh, Duke... Seriously, you just interrupted me.